Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Dubai Stars. Tonight, I have Dr. Baidun. Thank you, Habibi. Thank you for Happy coming. Happy to be with you. And we really appreciate the time. We've been trying to arrange this podcast for a few months now, and luckily, we got it done today. So, first of all, I want to congratulate you on your massive success that you have been doing in the corporate world of Dubai and the success that you have done on your social media. Congratulations on the 100,000 followers. Thank you. I know it takes a lot to, to achieve it, so that's really amazing. Thank you for your kind words. I really appreciate it. I'm so happy to be with you today. Obviously, we are close friends for quite some time, and you're busy and I'm busy, so, yeah. but we finally made it. For sure. So now, let me start with the first question that I ask all of my guests. Hmm. How did you come to Dubai, and why Dubai? Okay. I came to Dubai back in April 2016. I was fortunate since beginning of my career, since I graduated from the School of Architecture, I started always in real estate. But my focus was always the international market. Dubai, I came in 2016 because at that point in time, the real estate markets were picking up again. So it was the time, time, right time to make the move, and I saw the opportunity. And honestly, at that point in time, uh, Majid al Fotem approached me for a senior position there. So I said, you know what, it's time to make the move. Then two years after that, I joined Damak and I am here today. Since you have came and we've seen this massive elevation in the image and the productivity and everything in Damak has been really elevated, like, like a huge difference than what it used to be. Uh, what can you tell us about this a great mixture of your expertise along now with uh, Amira Sajwani taking over, handing over the, the sales and the relationship with all of the real estate companies. So tell us about how this mix came to life and how it reached this huge success that you guys have been doing. I was very fortunate because by the time I joined Damak back in 2018, Amira was also uh, joining the company. Uh, Amira, she came as a fresh blood. Uh, despite her young age, she's very visionary and futuristic by nature. And she's a very strong leader. She's way more mature than her age. And I was lucky to work with her very closely. So from her end, she was trying to bring a new flavor to Damak and accordingly dominate the market. So I put my expertise with her visionary leadership on the sales perspective and I focus on the product definition to come up with products that are, I believe, were differentiated in the market. And thank God it helped in moving forward and elevating, you know, our market share. And we are, I believe, uh, number one when it comes to residential products in the market today from a market share perspective. Market share, that's really amazing. Like knowing Dubai, Dubai has giants of developers, whether they are private developers or governmental, they own lots of stuff. So to grab that market share, this is extremely impressive. Take me now to your lifestyle. Let's talk about how fit you are having 3% of body fat, <laughs> which is crazy. Uh, how, what did this change in your life, adapting to this lifestyle? And tell me uh, how productive you felt after really getting stuck to this daily uh, suffering routine. I call it suffering, because after <laughs> seeing your videos and your workout, this is suffering. This is not enjoyable. <laughs> the story started back when I was 14 years old, actually. Uh, this is when I started doing uh, martial arts at that point in time. Most of the people, they assume that uh, I'm a bodybuilder because of, you know, the shape. I'm not actually, I'm a, I'm a martial, martial art practitioner. So I started at the age of 14 and I was, I discovered actually that I'm good in the sport by coincidence. So in a couple of years, I became the champion of Lebanon for two consecutive years before entering the School of Architecture. And I've got my first black belt at the age of uh, 18. Then in the process, I maintained this as a lifestyle because I was competing. And the beautiful thing about competition in sports, particularly martial arts, is that just imagine the moment, Anthony, the moment when you are entering the cage or the ring. You've been preparing yourself for a month to face your opponent. Eating, eating, sleeping early, following the routine. Imagine the moment when you step on the cage and all the audience is watching you. That's the moment of truth. It's the most fearful moment you can ever have in your life. So after you go through that, any public presentation, any meeting will become a piece of cake for you. And that helped a lot. Now, on the other part, that requires a lot of discipline to maintain. Look, it's way easier to reach the 3% body fat and as opposed to maintaining it because that requires dedication on daily basis, every day. 
I woke up at 5.30 in the morning every day. And I work out for an hour and an hour and a half every day, including weekend. I don't recommend this, by the way, to many people because you should have a rest day, but I don't. I, I can't, it's, it's in my blood. So that discipline makes me very focused. And in the morning when I wake up, because of the blood flow, the moment I enter the office, I feel as if we are already half day. Yeah. And I felt that compared to the days where, let's say if I am sick, I cannot work out, my level of concentration is completely different. And even my mood is not the same. So that helps me a lot, even I can focus, let's say for 12 hours. That has nothing to do with my personal capabilities. It's because of the workout that I believe is making the blood flow in my body working well because of my diet that's very religious and that which is helping to maintain a high level of focus and concentration across the day, which obviously elevate the likeliness of you taking the right decisions across your meetings and across the event that you would face during the same day. Keep you calm, keep you energetic, you can keep going. I feel the same. I don't wake up at 5.30 for sure. <laughs> Maybe I sleep at 5.30. <laughs> but I feel like if I don't work out in the morning when I have my lunch, let's say 2 or 3 p.m., I'm gone. But the day that I work, I'm super energetic. I can go to 8, 9, 10 p.m. working, not just chilling. So yeah, uh, I can relate with this one. Tell me about this new launches that you guys have been doing. Uh, we're seeing now even the launches are different. You're booking great venues. When you come to this event, you feel like you're going to a royal wedding, something super luxurious, you know? And uh, how are you guys like really uh, trying to do this balance between releasing something luxurious and then the week after it more luxurious and the week after it more luxurious so we're seeing like maybe you guys are now only in competition with yourselves how we can enhance our product even though the products that you have been uh, launching recently for the year and they have has been extremely luxurious look we look at things from a couple of perspectives one <coughs> usually all not let's, let's say not let's not say all the developers most of the developers the way they approach real estate is that well you have a product you need a unit certain unit size you need a certain ticket price get what the market wants understand it the reason in the market and let's do our best efforts to promote it and market it the way we approach uh, real estate is completely different in our head the moment we start thinking about the product we try to imagine ourselves sitting on the deal table with the customer sitting with us and what he would like to have. What are the features that he needs? What's the lifestyle that he's looking for? What's the story that he needs to be told? And then we, re we reverse engineer the process till we reach the brief on how we shall start and that would guide us all the way through till the product is there and we release it to the market. And as you rightly said, all the agents in Dubai keep asking, okay guys, you have What's next? So you are elevating the bar every single time. Personally, I believe creativity has no limits. And I, we think, I think we proved this over the last couple of years by increasing the level of luxuriousness and the level of products and the level of the lifestyle every single, single time we are approaching the market. And I believe that we're going to keep doing so till God knows when. I totally forgot when was the last time that you released any development that wasn't branded. Yeah. We're seeing Cavalli, we're seeing all of this coming towards. So is this the new strategy now, like getting only branded residents, having this massive sizes, this nice decks, and somewhere towards the beach? Is this the new strategy of you guys doing now? The market is looking pretty much forward for something that's distinguished, differentiated. And we are lucky because our chairman, Hossein Sajwani, owns Cavalli and Di Grisogono simultaneously. I believe those are two most dominant brands in the real estate market today from a franchising and branding perspective. And every single time we go to the market, we try to use one of those in order to make sure that the product is differentiated and it has a different story from a features perspective and from a lifestyle perspective. As an example, Di Grisogono, as a collection of jewelry, it has a strategy. So we have a new jam for every launch. And our chairman released, said this in one of his uh, release presses. 
So you see that that source of inspiration is acting for every single project. We started with the Emerald in Safa 1, then to the Ruby in Safa 2, and now we have a nice, uh, let's say, surprise upcoming in this quarter. That's not a teaser. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, take me back a little bit to your childhood, if you don't mind. We, we always like... Tell you what, all of my guests that I invite them to the show, they are all self-made. Mm. Nothing was given. And I found something mutual in all of them. They follow a specific routine. They are super focused. And they all had something in their childhood that triggered them to be the person they are today. So if you don't mind, take me back to Lebanon, to your childhood, and let me allow me in my name and the name of every Lebanese I know to tell you that we're extremely proud of what you're doing. We wish you nothing but the luck. Keep going, keep smashing it. You are an idol for all of us. Thank you, thank you, Habibi. Look, the whole story started even before I went to school. Uh, the difference of age between me and my mom is, is minimal. It's only 19 years. So when I was born, I'm the eldest kid. So I was her only focus in life. She has nothing to do but focusing on educating me and trying to enhance my skills. To the point where she started, she taught me how to start reading and writing before even entering school. Wow. So when the moment no I entered, no pressure at all. <laughs> and the moment I entered, I had already an advantage compared to my peers. So every single year, I had also some lot of pressure from her to make sure I'm the number one of my class. Imagine from what we call Petit Jardin, uh, yeah, yeah. which is KG1, I think, uh, in the English system. After I finished school, then I had entered the School of Architecture, it was all the time, you ha you, it's not allowed to be number two, that's one. Second, an event happened when I was eight years old, actually I believe it guided my, my whole career in real estate. My cousin was doing his graduation project at the School of Architecture, and uh, he was preparing his graduation model, and there was some leftovers. So I took those leftovers and I designed my first building at the age of eight. And my dad, I still remember that moment, he looked at me, he told me, you cannot be but an architect. And actually that stuck in my head. And my whole drive, since I was eight, I will never be anything but architect. Even when I finished the high school, my mom was begging me to become a medical doctor because she wanted me to have the title, like any mother, as you know. I told them, no way, that, that's the only thing that I want to do. But still, I fulfilled her dream later on by getting the PhD. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. So, uh, you have controlled your well shape, you have controlled your career, you've been having a crazy career. Today, as it's safe to say that you are the face of the mark, you are always on stages. You're releasing the projects, you're talking about everything. You're humble enough to talk to everyone in the event. This is 3,000 to 5,000 people. This is not just a regular number. What's the ultimate goal? Where do we want to see you? I'm not going to ask you what you see yourself in five years. Where's the ultimate goal? What will make you satisfied? I think there is no end for ambition. And my satisfaction comes from seeing the projects getting realized and being delivered. Like, now I live in Damak Hills, and one of my earlier projects when I joined Damak was a la carte villas. Now it's being handed over. It's such a joy when I wake up in the morning and go to the gym and I see the construction advanced for those villas. There's nothing like it in the world. It's like a sculptor seeing his, his painting or a piece of art. It's coming to life. So that, that's the ultimate goal of satisfaction. Ideally, I prefer also to focus more at this stage on international projects to make sure that, you know, our footprint as a company is being spread internationally. That's good from a portfolio perspective. And on the personal level, that will help me to extend my experience or extend you know, my deliverables beyond the boundaries of Dubai. How many countries you guys are in so far? We are currently, in addition to Dubai, obviously, we have projects in Abu Dhabi. We have projects in Lebanon, Jordan. Uh, we have a master plan in Iraq. Uh, we have a UK. tower in uh, yeah, Nine Elms in UK. We are doing now a tower in Maldives. And also in Maldives, we... In Maldives? Maldives, we are doing a resort. Of course. Yeah. So now then Miami is going to be branded Cavalli as well. That's the current strategy, yes. Okay. 
I think this is gonna be <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm super excited <laughs> to see how it's gonna be turning out. Dr. Baidun, so I posted on my Instagram that I am having a very special guest. I just put your picture and people start sending me, ask him this, ask him that. So I just want to ask a few questions that the audience has requested for. So I'm just passing the message. Sure. Agents are very happy with your commission scheme. They are saying, no doubt, you're the best commission provider in the city and your payment is too quick. It's in the range of six weeks to eight weeks, 60 days. Some of those, they are saying, we might be worried that you guys are forming your own direct sales team where you will be cutting off this third party. Is this true? No, it's not true at all because, you know, Damak, one of its area of strength is the diversification of channels. Look, it's very logical to have as diversified channels as possible to maximize your reach and maximize your volumes of sales. We'll be shooting ourselves on the foot if we chop off one of the major channels. So definitely that should not be a worry at all. You heard that. You know yourself. I'm not going to mention your name. I embarrass you in front of everyone. But the commissions will stay the same. Uh, second question. Uh, I got a question It was very interesting by saying, we are seeing now that there will be a very big hype coming to Ras al Khaimah. Would the mug will be looking to obtain something very nice on the beach? We are always looking for opportunities, whether in UAE or outside it. Whenever the numbers make sense, we'll make the move. Very diplomatic answer. <laughs> <laughs> and the third one, which was really interesting question. So they asked me that now, since they are spreading all the way in UAE, why we're not, we, we, the, like, the question was like, we are hearing a lot about Ali Sajwani talking about the metaverse, mm. but nothing has been like specifically announced from the mark that they are entering this experience. Can you tell us more about it? Unless if it's super confidential. Look, obviously Ali already had a, uh, an interview yesterday and he talked about it on yeah. the Dubai forum. Obviously he's the one that's leading this effort, but to my knowledge and to my understanding, Ali is working on a project by which he's creating a, an avant-gardist experience by which people will be able to buy actual properties through the metaverse uh, world. And I don't believe any single developer in Dubai has done this so far. Now, the details of those plans have not been revealed because we don't want to be copied early on. Of course, but you're going to be copied eventually. You know it, that. Yeah, but you know what's going to be the trick? Those uh, ideas are so technically complex. So by the time you crack the system and you go live, then... It's take them four or five years. Exactly. So by that point in time, you would have nourished this and, and you know, uh, capitalize on this. And by that point in time, you come up with something new. But if you reveal the details early on, then you're going to give yourself less room or less advantage when you go live. So can we say, like now, instead of someone <coughs> traveling to Dubai, coming to your sales center, checking your uh, show apartment or the actual units that they are live, someone, let's say, if he's in his basement in Poland, will be able through the metaverse to be checking all of the Mac properties. That will be possible. And for those who don't know, we have already an online sales team as part of our direct channel where our salespeople would take a customer without even coming to Dubai through all the details of the unit. And we have all of our units shot in 3D and they're available on our website, it's not a secret, everyone can check it. Okay. So we can take them through the unit, through the World Wide Web, and if they like it, if they like the commercial terms, if they're happy with the ROI, the deal can be closed even where they're sitting at the... They're just submitting passport code exactly. and online payment, and that's it. And that's how easy to buy a property, especially with the market. Um, you have two kids. Yes, that's thank you. Let's say, fast forward 10, 5, 10, 20 years from now, your kids will stumble on this podcast. What you would like to leave them a message? Well, I would tell them two things. Follow your passion and put all the necessary effort to make it work. Even if you are the most talented person on the planet or the smartest person on the planet, nothing beats hard work. Put the hard work, follow your dreams, and it's impossible for you not to reach what you want if you put all the necessary effort. And if a day you decide to buy real estate, you come to Anthony. 
This is confirmed. No question about that. That's even that should not be even the question. <laughs> Dr. Baidun, thanks a lot for being on the show. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time and all of your knowledge. We're going to be putting all of your credentials in this video for people. They want to reach out to you directly, whether on YouTube or in Instagram, so they can contact you directly. And wishing you best of luck. A pleasure, my friend. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching this episode and see you in the next one.